Right, so high voltage experimentation is super cool, of course. And there used to be a couple of ways of getting a high voltage supply. Now there's loads of ways of getting a high voltage supply. You can use a car ignition coil, you can buy high voltage generators online, you can build your own Marx generator, loads and loads of ways. But a real favorite one was to scavenge this thing, a flyback transformer from a television and make use of that. The problem is, of course, televisions and cathode ray tube displays are disappearing. You don't see them anymore in the same way that you used to with these things inside them. But there is an alternative. Now, you used to find that these things appeared in microwave ovens, and they were a microwave oven transformer, another way of getting good high voltage, incidentally. But they're starting to replace them with this thing, a flyback transformer. So we're going to have a look at scavenging those bits. Okay, so you don't come across these kind of things very often these days. Once, obviously, they were absolutely everywhere. As this is a cathode ray tube, and they were used for see, uh, computer displays and televisions, and you just got tons of them. These days we're all into flat screens and LCDs, so these are a bit more rare. But um, I work near to a company called Biotech, or a computer company, and sometimes when they have bits of old scrap and I show an interest, they're quite happy to let me take some or give me something, and they gave me this, so thank you very much, Biotech. What we're going to do is we're going to take it to pieces. Now, it's dead easy. There's only four screws holding the back on. And once you undo those four screws, you can pull this apart There we go, and have a look at the gubbins inside. Now this is the CRT, obviously. This line here is the flyback transformer, which is sitting down there. And there's a ton of projects you can do with high voltage and flyback transformers. Uh, and that's what we're actually after. But obviously there's quite a few other bits here as well. So I'm gonna take this apart and lay out the parts. Okay, so all I've done is pull apart the case and pull every plug out. That's obviously the electronics board. Um, this is the power, this is the control. It's this bit we're after, the um, flyback transformer. So we're going to get that board out and desolder that, and then any other components that I think are going to be worth rescuing. There's a couple of very nice resistors there, for instance, which would be pretty cool. But we can desolder that and get some parts off of that. Then we've got the cathode ray tube itself. This bit is the electron gun, and that's the control unit. There we go, and it just lifts off. There's a screw in here that holds this collection on. This is the control coils. And that's a ferrite right there. And there's a whole load of in um, interference wire, Litz wire, I believe, wrapped around everything. So we're gonna take this to pieces as well and see what bits that we've got out there. The only interesting thing about this is this. This is the cup that goes to the CRT. There's a hole right there in the glass and it comes from the flyback. It's the main highest voltage out and it hooks into that hole with this little hook. All you do is fold back the cup, stick a screwdriver in there and it leaves it levers straight out. Okay, let's get the rest of those bits off. Okay, so we've desoldered the flyback transformer. That's the bit that we want. This bit, which I thought was shielding, actually, is a degaussing coil. So underneath all this is just a massive coil of copper wire. So it's a lot of copper wire, and it hasn't been resined or anything, so that's really usable. So we're going to save that and sometimes strip off the rest of this plastic, alum aluminized plastic, wind that up, and we'll be able to use that copper again, because, like I say, it's just a degaussing coil. This is the shielding coil right here, which was held on by springs and loops and then goes to earth. So that's the shielding coil right there. Then we've got the control unit. Now this is an RGB, so you can um, see that these actually control the electron gun, which is right here. So that fires electrons at the screen. These field coils deflect that according to the signals that come from the, com uh, from the computer, and we get the picture on. Now there's a small bolt holding that there, and if you undo that, then the field coils lift straight off, and you can see the field coils right in there. These actually have been resined together, so they're a bit of a pain, but right around there is another coil of wire, very fine wire, which is many meters long, and that hasn't been resined, that's just been wound on, so that can be recovered quite easily, actually. But this is the actual CRT itself. Now, the dangers of this, because everybody loves to hear about the dangers of things, don't they? The glass used in this stuff is extraordinarily thick because it's a, a vacuum, obviously, and, and it is in a vacuum. So it's a very thick glass, it's in a vacuum, and it's a lead glass. 
The phosphors in here are also um, supposed to be very dangerous, so you're not supposed to breathe them in. And it, by itself, it is actually a capacitor. So it can be a, a very lethal charge capacitor. This one I happen to know has been lining around for ages, so there's any chance of capacitance has now bled off. If you're working with one that's been used, you may want to take precautions against that, because if you get that as a shock once, you're probably never going to get it again, and you certainly won't want to have that shock once. It's going to hurt. It's a high voltage. So if it's a bit new, I guess wear gloves. If it's been kicking around for ages, the chances of it actually storing anything are next to nothing. But you do need to have a degree of care about such a thing. It is also why these things are regulated for disposal, because of the lead content in the glass. So that's going to have to be properly disposed of. It can't just be slung in the bin. Okay. The more observant of you might notice, I have some glasses and a hammer and a lack of concern for my own personal safety. Because what we're going to do is crack this open and have a look at the inside. Definitely not one that I would encourage you to try at home. But let's put this somewhere where the flying glass won't go too far and smash it open. Okay, this is definitely a one-time event. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, sorry, you have to laugh, don't you? Because you get so many warnings about this. Don't do this because it'll implode and shower you with glass. And you do that. And to be honest, it's disappointing, isn't it? Okay, that white ash you can see, that's the phosphors. There's the glass. As you can see, it's really, really thick. It's coated here. This is kind of like a doping coating, I believe. And then we have a shield in there. We're going to clean up a bit and have a bit of a better look at that. Okay, that was sincerely disappointing. I was expecting one tiny implosion at least. You know, glass shards flying everywhere. From what they tell you, that's what should happen. But as you saw, it was a bit of a damp squib. But anyway, we cracked it up and here is the front screen and you can see the remains of the phosphors on it. These are the bits that glow when they get hit. And here is the uh, mesh screen, it's a separate, uh, that's the mesh interference screen, a bit damaged because of the glass, and it's got a metal shield on it, and there are the three electron guns. So that's really all there is to a cathode ray tube. Of course we went through all of that to get this thing, the flyback transformer, and these used to be absolutely everywhere. But of course with cathode ray tubes going out of fashion, and we're now on LCDs, these are going to become much, much rarer. There's still a lot you can do with that in terms of high voltage, so it's still an interesting piece if you get a piece and you've got some lying around, there's loads of things you can do with it, but they're getting harder and harder to find. However, all is not lost. I was recently taking apart a microwave oven and I heard the rumour that they were going to get rid of these things. This is a microwave oven transformer, it's responsible for stepping up mains voltage to about 2000 volts or so. And this big block of iron is what you found in just about every microwave you ever come across. But I heard a rumour they were getting rid of these things and going to replace it with electronics. And I thought, ooh, that's a shame. And I took apart a Philips inversion um, microwave oven. And instead of this, there was this. Now, all of the other gub gubbins were in there. The control circuits, the super, uh, sorry, the capacitor, and this, instead of the microwave oven transformer. So I cracked it open, and there's the inside of it. And lo and behold, right there is a flyback transformer. So we're not going to be able to get these things from TVs, but we are going to be able to get them from microwave ovens, which is pretty awesome. Let me give you a close-up of that circuit board. Okay, so there is the flyback transformer removed from the microwave oven. Now you can see that that's the input side right there, and then the output side actually is here and here. It was stunningly easy to remove, actually. And if you want to, this is going to be super easy to do any modifications on, because nothing is sealed. So you can rewind this one if you primer if you want, you can rewind the secondaries if you want. You can see on this side it goes through rectification. Here we've got a couple of high voltage diodes, a bit of smoothing, a couple of capacitors there. So that is an awesome thing. And when you compare it to what we used to use, which is this thing here, now you did have to go through a little bit to try and find out which was the uh, ground pin, and that was invariably the high voltage you used, although there's high voltage available here. There are lower high voltage, but still high voltage. Remember, these drive the electron guns and the field coils, and this is for the actual CRT itself. 
itself. So that can still be got hold of and still is useful, but it is on its way out. However, this is on its way in. So as a flyback transformer, it's fantastic to be able to just get that from a microwave oven and that will make it superbly easy to modify. So I didn't actually pull apart a microwave because I've done a microwave oven pull apart video and all you'll find is that white box sitting in there so just follow that video and you'll find it. My vote incidentally on high voltage that you can source yourself has got to be the microwave oven flyback transformer. It's stunning in its simplicity, it's really easy to see how to modify it and to see what's going on. So fantastically awesome if you have some microwaves with those things in them grab them. Incidentally, as these things are going out, these are stunningly useful for no end of experiments. So start hoarding them. <laughs> You're not going to be able to find them soon, but you will be able to find a ton of these things. Anyway, I hope the video is interesting and thank you very much for watching.